Hold on, let me take a sip. Yay! We made it. We made it. It was um it's a lot easier to record on uh you know a Friday where I have a day off and I'm just like lazing around and in bed practicing my Duolingo than like six AM on a Thursday <laughs> before I do a full day of work. I know. I'm oh. sorry. Our schedules have been wild. And uh, yeah, I was up at until 2.30 in the morning uh, driving home from Providence <clears> last night because my daughter's flight got delayed several times. And Well, I, is that because she's flying into Providence and not Boston? Because that might have something to no, do with it. No, it was because it's Breeze, first off. It's an airline. And I'm like, okay. That'll do it. I mean, you get what you get when you spend $300. This is what you get. Yes. Yep. So whatever, we, we're dealing with it. She had to like fly into Raleigh, Durham and then get the connector. Ugh, so that's the what the problem was. Worst. Yeah. Yeah. Good for her for doing the like connector flight though. Like yeah. I'm I'm such a snob now. I'm like directs only. I won't or do nothing. it. I'm sorry. Exactly. I'm the same way. <laughs> I, I won't no do it. in my life for that. And I probably should look into the budget travel airlines because I'm not as picky once I'm sitting in my seat. I don't care. Like, I've got my iPad. I've got my book. I'm good. Yeah. And I'm a little person. So I'm like, there's no, like, lack of space you could give me that would really bother me. Yeah. Um, And then when I, I'm kind of a Jet, uh, JetBlue loyalist, but the flights are always delayed anyway, no matter who you fly with. I know. So it's not even the airline's save. fault at this point anymore. I My know, brother flew in from JFK about. right into Hyannis yesterday. So we had like a, we did the obligatory oh. Hyannis like lobster roll yeah. and yeah, and hung out together and, you know, like just, you know, bitching about our moms. So Perfect. <laughs> that's yes. what siblings do. The trauma bonding. Yeah. We were talking about this a little bit before totally. laughing about <laughs> laughing about how like it is just what you do when you, you get, in time, you know, you you hang out with your siblings, and um, I was saying too that like uh, the poop man boy, boyfriend, not boyfriend, whatever term it is, um, hung out with my siblings this weekend, and it was great, and it was the first time he'd met them. We had just been waiting; things had gotten busy, whatever. And immediately at the dinner table, everybody was just trauma bonding and talking about all of the different things that went on in our family. Like, with don't our- you want to be a part of this family? And all I kept thinking was like, thank God we had been dating for a while before I entered him into this situation. And thank God he had like little bits and pieces of things. So on one hand, I felt so validated that I was like, see, we've talked about this. On the other hand, I was like, this is what we do. Oh, I'm going to have a full weekend of that because it's graduation weekend. I can't believe it, but I'm so ready for it. And I'm just over the amount of activities that we have been like just, oh, yeah, by the way, I need a ride. And oh, yeah, by the way, I need the this. Yeah. Um, for the last three weeks. I'm assuming we're not having a grad party at your house, given the state no. of the house that you posted recently. Yeah. Did you like that? I had immediate anxiety and had to close my phone. I was this like, is why I didn't even it. come home yesterday. I, like, I picked up my brother. I'm like, we're not going home because I can't be there. I can't look at it. But actually, it worked out to my benefit because my husband did, in fact, clear it out. <laughs> so. Okay. It was manageable by the time I did get him home. So There was like four story stacked piles of unknown unnameable objects Correct. on the, the kitchen table and yep. it was like and then you just see him sitting there like casually perusing a coffee table i'm just block. gonna look through my daughter's yearbook this is what i'm gonna do i came downstairs and i was like what the absolute <laughs> <laughs> Why? i'm like nope i'm just gonna take a photo of this and pretend it doesn't exist i'm gonna put on the internet and then we're gonna move on <laughs> and then i have my retribution thank you <laughs> This oh, is how we operate man. in this day and age. This is how it is. So well, it's a it's officially summer. I like we didn't really talk about this on Tuesday's episode, but well, like officially unofficially, yeah. But it's here. I, yeah, it's it's officially Cape Cod summer in my brain, right? Like it, it has started. I keep being like, oh, oh, we're in it. Oh, it's here now. Yeah, we've got five high school graduations this weekend, and I think best buddies. So it's going to be a bleep show driving around. Just oh, wrap good. your brain around that. If you think you're going to get around town this weekend, you're well, not. Well, that's good to know. I didn't. That did not even occur to me. Yeah, just prepare. Well, yourself. I don't know if I'm staffed for that. That's okay. Nobody will be coming into the mall. That's fine. Yeah, it just might be one of those weekends where it's nice and quiet, and you can catch up on inventory or something. Oh. <laughs> I don't know perfect whatever you retail people do <laughs> <laughs> everything all at once all at the same time <laughs> totally I was, I was standing yesterday this is just like the mark of the week and we have new employees and not everybody is 
forget like familiar, but like comfortable, right? Like right. we're getting them used to like jumping in. And I swear, I had a rolling rack filled with stuff on one hand because we're moving everything around. My arms full of stuff. And then I had to pee, but I couldn't put the stuff down to like, because they had to like go, well, if I'm going to stop, I'm going to like at least put them where they go. So I'm running around the 6,000 square foot store. And I swear every three feet a customer was talking to me. And I was just getting shorter and shorter. Like every time. Like I can only hold this for so long. <laughs> <laughs> like there's other people over there who probably can help you, but they also can't help you because they're brand new and they right. don't know what anything is either. They didn't know what anything is, and then I moved it all around in two days. So like God help them. It was yeah. There's something to be said about seasonal staff. It happened on Tuesday when I was working yeah. at Shipwrecked, and uh, they all all new staff in here. I'm like, who are these people? Yeah. And why are there so many waitresses in the bullpen area? But it was yeah. all like training day, new people day. Yeah. And everybody learning everything. So that and is such we a need fact them. of Cape Cod. We need those college kids to come yes. home. There's so many businesses though that need those J ones. Like we get it. We totally get it. And I'm willing to be patient for a while, but like also like jump in faster. Like right. we, we really need you. <laughs> I am literally sinking into the ground here. Pick up, pick up a rack. Look like and you know, something. they're all going to be over it and burnt out by like July 8th. Yep. <laughs> it's a it's a fast eight weeks, everybody. Let's get it done. Yep. <laughs> crazy all right let's get into what's roasting because we got let's, we got some good stuff in here some juicy let, tidbits let's get into it so um angelina jolie and brad pitts i think this is the second daughter or the second actually i don't know the gender of any other children and with between their names so i'm not going to pretend i know but shiloh um has requested to legally drop pit from their i think that that's their personally. first child together like but their actual a- biological child together but Okay, so then there's an there's an older one. Hasn't this isn't this the second kid that's done this though? No, I think this I don't know. I think the other is one this, changed. Is this the same know. kid that removed it from a p- playbill in their show? Or is that a different kid? I think that's a different kid. Okay. So think so I think Shiloh recently turned 18. Yeah. Change request on submitted May 27th, the day of her 18th birthday. Okay. So she was I mean, most people like want to buy a cigarette, but <laughs> <laughs> I'm like waiting for my daughter's first tattoo. I'm like, I'm surprised you're not going to get that. And she's like, I don't have anybody in my bank account. And I'm like, yeah, and no, I'm not paying for that. So, oh man, does she know what she wants to get? Yeah, she's wanted. She's been asking me for a tattoo since she was 13 and it's been the same one. And I'm like, well, if you like it just as much, you'll like it just as much when you're 18. So now she is. And I'm I'm shocked she hasn't gone there yet. But once again, doesn't have a license or money, so <laughs> just, that'll do it. We're not rushing into things like ink. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Or changing last names. Yeah, I just think it's um, it's interesting when you have two kids that are kind of denouncing dad, right? Like goes to show something's going on, or there's more behind the scenes, or maybe it's not. Maybe it is kind of what people are saying between the two feuds, and it must be ugly. I mean, on the day of your birthday, that's like what you're focused on. Being yeah, that's really that unfortunate. I didn't feel like their relationship was that bad, but I mean, I, I you don't live in other people's shoes to know what a, a burden or a problem that is, you know? And yeah, maybe I mean... Something that makes her feel better or yeah, that I mean, feel better. Speaking from personal experience, right? Like, you, you never, especially when you're you're going through it like good on her for being 18 and being aware of it and willing to separate at that point in time i don't know if i don't know if you have maybe you do maybe i mean they've been separated from their dad i think for a few years now so must have been really young and cognitively aware of how bad it was as a young age to be able to make that decision and good for them because there have been plenty of situations and i'm like uh, an example of this that like you don't know how bad it is until you separate and you're an adult and then you're like right. whoa I actually realized how terrible that was now that I'm adult now that I have cognitive understanding of right from wrong more yeah. than I did there in like extremely complicated emotional situations right you're out once you're like five ten years out of survival mode you're like whoa wait a minute that's actually really messed up right right so, it, there's got to be some parenting dynamics there with well and I'm glad she's got a lot of siblings that they can yeah. you know bounce stuff off of yeah. Once again, here we are talking about our trauma bonds with our sibs. And I, I yep. said to my brother yesterday, I'm like, I'm sorry, I'm like dumping on you a little bit, but you're the only one who intimately understands yeah. Yeah. this whole dynamic. And yeah. even that you don't know because I'm so much older than him. Yeah. Like going from like where it was to like how you grew up and it was a little bit different, but also yeah. still just as bad. Yeah, for sure. Um, So I think definitely unfortunate, but also like kind of an insight to how 
bad of a situation it was that was protected from the media. Because like, this we is are the first move I'm making when I turn 18. Just a, I, I think it glares. And We're and it kind of more. It validates a lot of the tabloids from what Angelina Jolie is saying, and it yeah. also validates that like there was probably way more under the surface than was actually public. So it kind of again validates. Angelina Jolie and being like, I'm really trying to protect my kids in this. Yeah. I'm really trying to not let this information go public because we're sitting here like, okay, it must have been bad, but we don't really know. And that in itself, I think is a feat. If it's been so yeah. bad that she wants to change the name, her name on the day of her 18th birthday, but we as a public have had no idea, no leaks, no whatever. I mean, it's a loud, pieces, it's right? a loud action. Right. For a, for a very quiet amount of information that we've been yes. able to, to understand. Yes. So that's, I think, really, really telling overall of this. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> what What is the latest in this Jennifer Lopez, I Ben Affleck? Felt, I just feel like we need a little bit of an update because nobody really knows what's happening. But now they've been, been seen out together at somebody's graduation party, one of the kids. All right. And Ben's mom was there. Like, I feel like. I don't know. Maybe you like put on a brave face, but it's like, it's a graduation party. It's a pretty intimate thing. I just feel like they're fighting. I, I feel like it's a power fight. It's a, yeah. it's a situation that happens in a marriage. And when you love someone that much, you hate them just as much when you're fighting. It is like, it's passion. Yeah, that's probably true. I mean, I still think I don't see this lasting for a long time, but I'm glad to see no. them like doing their thing for the kids. I yeah. guess. Um, and once and again, I mean, why. it's media coverage. So it's like how much of this is real and how much of this is not. I mean, you can clearly tell that they are not loving each other right now. Something's going on. Yeah, but their body language has always been funky, though. Like, remember when they were totally fine, but he opened the car door for her and then he like jokingly like slammed it. Oh, I know. And, like got to, and it was like a whole story. But he was right. really, in my opinion, like just being funny and didn't think right. that there was a camera on him at the time. And they know. Oh, right. So I don't know if their body language has always read like happy, loving couple, PDA heavy, you know, <laughs> anyway. I don't know if that's in his nature. No, I don't think so. That's why I loved following it up with this Dolly Parton story, which she says the key to her marriage lasting 57 freaking years is taking time apart, yeah. doing their own projects. You know, anything gets old. Yeah, and then they have things to talk about when they come back together, which I think is so fun. And this reminded me of my grandparents who've been married for 65, I want to say. Which is incredible. Years. Absolutely insane. And um, we celebrated their anniversary a couple of years ago, the big one. And um, we were all out to dinner and it was like, so pop, like what? What what's it take? What's it take to do 65 <laughs> years? Yeah. And he was like a really big house. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> The ability to go to your separate room. <laughs> it's like, okay. Now, what's going on with this Natalie Portman, Paul Mescal? Literally nothing, actually, but I had to put it on here because I ship this so hard. Yeah. I'm obsessed with this. I think it's a really cute little pairing. She's like very clearly, I don't want to say this. He's very clearly her type. Like, if you look at her, her ex husband, Benjamin PA, he's like, yeah, this, like artsy, kind of disheveled like bad boy type and that like yeah. has Paul Mezcal like just written all over it. So yeah. I, I'm in it. They were caught like on a smoke break outside of a London pub. I'm in it. They're probably only friends. Actually, the reports have said they're only friends, but like I ship this so hard. Like you could not be only friends. That would be okay with everybody involved. I think he's hot. He's Irish. I kind of like it. <laughs> she likes that too. Yeah. She's cute. She's got kids. And, you know, I feel like she's always been like a little bit more down to earth. Like she never really wanted the glam life, I don't think. Yeah. Um, she does give that girl next door vibe. And she's been in the industry for so long and in... takes her craft seriously. Yes. Like, I'm a serious actress. You know, right. it's not just a, a little role that I'm picking up. She really, I feel like she really does a good job with her job. Totally. And she's absolutely superb in like all the rom-coms and, and whatnot. And I feel like she maybe hasn't had like a lot of, a lot of serious roles, but the ones that she's been in have been fantastic. She's been unbelievable in all of her little rom-coms. I think she's, I think she's really good at her craft and I think she's passionate about it and being able yeah. to adapt as an actress to all these different genres. And I think that's something that Paul might be into. I'm just, I don't know. I love it. I love this pairing. Like, please, <laughs> please do you this for everybody involved. Together. We said we want it. So get yes, it done. And your ex-husband was a loser. <laughs> right? Well, he was a ballet dancer, so it's not quite his fault. It's just how you're built. Brain trained. 
Tori's like, I know those people. They don't fall far from the apple tree. I've met That's him before. Happened. I've I've had like full on conversations with him before and seen his shows. He did a um Benjamin Millipier, he did a um a residency with a choreographic group that he started from his companies in New York that he worked with in on Martha's Vineyard. My yeah. dad worked there at the time. Um, I was able to get into like rehearsals and watch um, and have conversations with the dancers. It was like the most incredible experience for me as a kid because these were my like absolute idols in like my hometown in the summer. But being able also to have like with th- them. like full on broken narcissist people. Uh, but yes, as an adult, like I look back on some of those conversations so with unhealthy. him and I'm like, oh, <laughs> you were weird. Right. At the time, so though, unhealthy. I was like, these were like you know, my star studded amazing idols of the world. And then, you know, as an adult, you're like, oh, that weird thing you said was actually really freaking creepy. No, yeah, I well, go back and think about it. This dovetails very nicely into our next story, which is also <gasps> a little bit creepy, a little bit weird, but also I have questions. I love Ice-T on this. So, he's just matter of fact. You know what I mean? When you meet a person, what you see is what you get. He is yes. not going to hold any punches back. He's going to let you know what his thoughts are. And I, this Lenny Kravitz situation made me laugh. So Ice-T calls Lenny Kravitz nine years of celibacy weirdo shit. And I, <laughs> it totally is weirdo shit. <laughs> like, let's rewind and unpack this Lenny Kravitz business. I, I've never been a huge fan of his music, but I've always been a huge fan of his. I think um, he's, he's just a – I have no – feeling towards him i think he's just a weirdo in general yeah. so like i saw the story a couple days ago and i was like okay like the none of this tracks outside of well i love zoe kravitz i think that he made a super cool human but i think yeah. that's lisa benet is doing less yeah lenny kravitz is doing so i feel like she gets her art in her cerebral whatever from from dad but i feel like lisa benet is so just like down to earth yeah. regular approachable human so they created this just really awesome amazing actress totally. and very beautiful soul totally. um with that said what is letty kravitz what are you doing dude I don't, <laughs> no apparently nothing literally not anything <laughs> but he he said like he's waiting for the right person i guess and now that's all well that's all well and good that's all well and good i i guess what I think is interesting about the story is that, like, it's weirdo shit because it's let. Is it weirdo shit because it's Lenny Kravitz? Is it weirdo shit because it's a male saying it? If this was a woman saying this, would people feel differently about it? Because I feel like it wouldn't be that big of a deal, and you wouldn't have people like Ice T saying that's weirdo shit if it was a woman of the same age. Yeah, and I also thought it was really interesting in our little news. Um, I can pull it up in our little like news thing. Yep. That we use, like six stories down, is an article that says, like, um, talking about like a, a woman celibacy and how it's good for them. Mm-hmm. And I was like, this is really funny that we have these concepts. So is it a stories. sexist thing that we think it's weirdo shit, or is it because he's just talking? I feel like nine years in a, is an excessive amount of time to tell someone that you're celibate for, but also like, it could have been also accidental too. Like, okay, I'm two right. years and I think I'm going to date somebody. And then you go into it. You're like, you know what? I've waited two years and now I don't really think this is the right thing for me with this person. And then suddenly you're nine years in. And know? I'm trying, I'm not trying to poo poo your spiritual journey, whatever it is that no, you need to do to heal yourself right. from whatever shit that you've encountered. No one's saying that that's a wrong thing. It is just something that you don't typically see coming out of a male's mouth. So you are correct. When we're right. talking about these situations, if if Lenny was a woman, it would be a different space. I, I definitely so. agree. Yeah, I think so too. I think it's just a st- oh, sorry. I'm just like laughing we've, at these stories. I see. Like, we've seen your we've seen your wife. <laughs> we know what you're about. We love Coco. Don't yeah. get me wrong. <laughs> and now, mind you, like it's Ice T's commentary, so absolutely. Right. But I do think like this would be, I think it would not have made news or like ice T wouldn't have commented if it was right. like, but even if it was like any, nine years equally. without sex, like, is there something physically wrong with you? Or is this something that you're choosing? I don't Either know why it's not my business. And if that's making you happy and that's the right thing for you, then do you. But just in terms of awareness, if you, again, as I said, if you scroll down six stories on our little news feed, they go like this in headlines, woman who quote quit sex for 10 years claims life is better and easier. Okay. Next story, man who constantly cheats on his wife, quote, I deserve to enjoy life before I'm ugly and old. 
Two stories down after that. Study. Having kids may shorten a man's life. So you're like... Okay. Okay. Is this not... Or is it... um, What is that called? The, The... Inaccurate narrator there. Is it the person that's gathering these stories throw it having a bad day? <laughs> like or like is, is he it? having a laugh? It, did he have a laugh to pull these stories together? And right and we're I'm the only one that caught on to it. Like right, see, let's see what somebody does with all of these where yes. we're at. But I still think it's funny, like just it just gives you a like a snapshot perspective of like what the headlines are that get published and get newsworthy, like all in the same perspective, right? Like yeah. kids short in a man's life. You're allowed to cheat. You can be celibate and we think it's weird. And then a woman says like, but if you actually don't have sex and you stay home and have the mother of your children, then like you're going to be happier. Right. Like, <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> Thank you for that. What, what I've gathered from all of this is um, guys, just get out there and do the thing that makes your heart happy. Whatever it is. <laughs> Speaking of the love and weirdo shit, what is this new Netflix competition series? I have no idea. That was the conclusion. I have no idea. Love uh, Love is Blind meets The Voice with um, some similarity to NBC Songland. Okay, what? so the show is called Building the Band, and it's pitched as Love is Blind meets The Voice. Aiming to put together a next great group, by gathering 50 of the most talented singers who will compete for a spot in the band without seeing each other until their final performance. So it's like truly gathering the most talented singers without any band aesthetic is what they're trying to do. I get it. But I feel like we're reaching here. I I don't know. I kind of want to see it. Oh, I yeah. Like well, for, music... We're for sure going to watch. But I just mean, I think we're reaching in terms of creativity. Like we're at the bottom of the barrel. Oh, 100%. Just... I don't think that this is a need to have kind no. of show. No. However, I do think that it's not going to be as crazed as they think it's going to be. I Correct. feel like music is one of those things that transcends the way you look, no matter what, mm-hmm. you know, when you look at some of these rock stars up close and personal, you're like, thanks. Like, yeah. that's why you're not you the front that's... man of the band. <laughs> but like... do you think that's, um, uh, of the past, or do you think that's still current? Because if you look at, I think that they glam them fans. up a little bit because that's what they have to do. Because we have social media so stringently on a way to promote, but I I still feel like it's okay to be your weirdo self, whatever yeah. it is. Your I body agree. doesn't matter anymore. I think we're moving away from that stereotype of what your body is like it's just i agree with sleeve. that but i do think that aesthetics are more important now in artists than ever just in the case of you have to be relevant you have to be socially viral like labels aren't signing people that don't have followers on these yeah. platforms right like i think there's because everything's so visual now i think there's more of an aesthetic piece to us now than there used to be when it was just like bands and vinyls bands and cassettes bands i feel and like radio. that's so manageable though because <laughs> i mean all you really do is need to get a stylist and tell them to shower a little bit more honestly like when it comes i don't know you don't think that, if you're ugly we can't help you like how much plastic surgery you'd be like you need to have your nose job if you want to be successful like, <laughs> yeah i don't think that that's the case in music Okay, I see your point. I think there's a changing times where if you look at who's been really successful, they have a like a huge push for aesthetic branding. Maybe yes, but I don't I don't think that that's nothing that a good um style consultant can fix. You know what I mean? I think we grab onto musicians with weird looks. Like it's a look. It's not necessarily a look that's what we would see on the runway. You know, on what I commercial mean? success, though, like think about like the most commercially successful pop stars today and of the past. Females are a different breed. Well, then you're talking about both sides I'm talking of your about mouth. bands. This is assembling a band. So there's always okay. someone that can be like the lead, and then the rest of everyone really doesn't quite matter. Okay. What about boy bands, though? Oh, yeah. Maroon 5. Yeah. You know, like, tell me what the rest of Maroon 5 looks like. Can you? Yeah, same thing. I was thinking the same thing, like One Republic. Right. You know what Ryan Tedder looks like, but you don't know what the rest of the band looks like. I don't even know. AJR wouldn't know if they fell on me. I'm trying to think of, like, boy bands that whatever. I mean, 
So even, I'm thinking like bands, big bands of the '90s that like I couldn't tell you. Goo Goo Dolls, like who knows the what? Like right past- beside Johnny Resnick, do you yeah, know the rest of the band? You do yeah. not. <laughs> you make a really, really good point. Yeah, <laughs> like it doesn't really matter what you look like back there. No one's looking at you. You're not the front person behind the drums anyway. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, and then when you get a hot one, you remember the one. <laughs> Like, yeah, true. That's yeah, we why need- we knew Tommy Lee. <laughs> yeah. He was a problem. <laughs> Otherwise, we never would have known who you were. That's or true. like the drummer from Def Leppard only had one arm. We knew that because it was badass. <laughs> okay, fair. Fair. So I think that this is really not a stretch. Um, I think that they're going to make it more of what they think it could possibly be like, oh, what do they look like? But it doesn't freaking matter because it's yeah. music. It's a good concept. I just go back to like, we're scraping the bottom of the barrel. Do we need for, this? You know, like, no. Yeah, absolutely not. Yeah. <laughs> I keep working at it. The only reason why I put up this marriage thing, uh, because it actually has saved my life. Okay. I was like, are you struggling? <laughs> no. <laughs> Cliff got a C apnea. I call it CPAP apnea CPAP? machine. So we got the machine um, like two months ago. And I got to tell you, I got a new lease on life. I sleep so much better. We are like, I'm like, good night. Put your hose on. Put your little mask on. Look like your little elephant self. And I sleep so much better. He doesn't snore. Is he it's, happier? Is he? Oh, my God. He is so much happy. Well, I mean, he's still Cliff. So <laughs> he is a Virgo. <laughs> yeah, that'll do it. Yeah. <laughs> That's so but okay. on the whole, this has like really changed my marriage. And when I saw it, I was like, absolutely go and get treatment, people. This has changed my world. It really um, has. Getting sleep study is getting sleep apnea treatment can save marriages. Research presented the Sleep 2024 annual meeting found that greater adherence to PAP therapy has a link to higher relationship satisfaction and fewer conflicts between patients and their partners. It's wonderful. This feels a little bit like Durr. like <laughs> you don't say but we're both getting better sleep now so we're way less grumpy yeah. and uh it's it's made a huge difference in our space poop poop man has a bit of a just a like it's more of a gurgle than it is a full <laughs> snore which <laughs> which i've with a father and ex-boyfriends who were like full snores this is like honey you are not a problem like i can yeah handle right this. but I am using the earplugs and we also might have to upgrade to a sound machine on top of the earplugs, but it's manageable. So I'm happy right. with that. Well, so this far, is something, you know, possibly for, for future. <laughs> if it becomes more than a know. gurgle. Yeah. <clears throat> something to jump into. Yeah, or and not separate to be bedrooms. Afraid. That works too. Bye. Sleep over there. It's fine. <laughs> okay. I, I was definitely thinking separate bedrooms for a real long time. I'm going to tell you. I would have. I don't know how you didn't. I don't know how you didn't pull that trigger. Twenty-two years, and finally, I'm like, ah. Oh my god! Twenty-two years of no of marriage. Twenty-five together are listening to that shit. I feel so much better. (laughs) When you're like, I haven't slept for twenty-five years. Like that's bananas. It's next level. I feel like my bags are lessened. <laughs> I'm like, I have less wrinkles. I'm sleeping better. Yeah. It's okay. Things are good. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> I know. So have a great weekend, Tori. Thank I you. know uh, we're going to have just a house full of, of joyful celebration. And I'm really looking forward to selling my little graduate. I'm going today to print out all of the random hairdos she has had. So we have reservations for 20. And I actually have 25 hairdos. <laughs> When she was in her wig phase, every color, every oh, short. So I got like her head on a popsicle God. stick. She's going to absolutely hate it. And I am excited. <laughs> that is. How did you come up with that? I just started looking. My husband's like, can you make um an album of all the photos? And I'm like, look at the different hair. She looks like a different human every three months. Like she totally looks completely different. I said, wouldn't it be funny to do one of those head popsicle sticks and instead just do all of her different hair? <laughs> That's brilliant. She's You're gonna, gonna have so much me. fun celebrating and enjoying. And yeah, I'm excited to just have around. all my family together. I know, like, I feel like the nest is full right now, so I'm gonna I go and enjoy that. them. Good, and we'll see you next week. At some yeah, point. get get perky with us Tuesdays and Thursdays, maybe Friday. We'll maybe. do our rest, maybe, and we'll find out. Um, oh, follow us on social media: Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Bye. The First Shot Morning Show is produced by Lemon Radio. When life gives you lemons, make radio. We encourage everyone to listen happier.com.